And welcome back to Janky AF and Year of the Aerostar, episode number 63. Well, 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 I'm excited for this one today. Um, we, uh, we've had a real good string of them, um, and um, no exception today. Really, really um, happy with this one. I, I, I can't say too much about it until um, after we review it, but as you can see, I am wearing red uh, today I'll be wearing red in the next two episodes and that's a little spoiler alert um, and as you uh, know if you've watched this before I try to color coordinate my outfits um, and I will say that we have a, a brand new semi-permanent uh, studio setup here I'm still tweaking and playing around with it so hopefully you can still see the arrow star in the background and uh, you know everything going on there um, we'll see how it looks with a little curve window when I cut that out but um, you know moving and grooving in the new year so here we go without further ado uh here we have a 1990 ford aerostar xlt extended minivan listed for three thousand two hundred dollars in granby connecticut now i've been to granby massachusetts but i have not been to granby connecticut so uh you know um two granbys don't make a right or something like that uh <laughs> or perhaps they do i don't know um Anyways, as you can see here, uh, just an immaculate Ford Aerostar and it is, of course, red in color. Um, I love a red Aerostar. I do bemoan the fact that there was not more of a fire engine red. I recently saw two fire engine red Aerostars. I was digging through hundreds of pictures of Ford Aerostars because uh, I'm a maniac. Um, so if I manage to relocate those, maybe I'll put them up here on the screen. Um, but, uh, you know, it's still a, a, it's a slightly, it's more like a barn red. It's a slightly darker hue, not, not quite towards a burgundy. Um, and this one seems to wear it really well, actually, uh, in this light. Um, but I love a red Aerostar. And recently, I, I, you know, if and when I uh, achieve the status of owning a, a third Ford Aerostar, I believe I want it to be an all-wheel drive extended model. Um, I do not have an all-wheel drive or an extended Ford Aerostar. They're both standard length. Um, and I do have some really great Ford Aerostars. Uh, you can see some of those if, you've, uh, if you're new to this channel. Um, but the next one I want to get is an all-wheel drive extended. And lately, I haven't seen a lot. Um, or, you know, prior to lately, lately I have seen a lot, which is what I'm getting to. Um, <laughs> um, and now they've just been sort of popping up. Um, I, I unfortunately really missed one that I really want to do a, um, an episode on, and that must have sold really quick. I and mean, this has been listed for two days. I imagine this will sell very quickly too, especially in the Northeast. They're a rare commodity, a hot commodity, and for very good reason, because there's not a lot of, you know, all-wheel drive, um, sort of work capable vans and of course this is a passenger van but they can be easily converted to cargo vans they were designed to be both um, so yeah you could get like an all-wheel drive honda odyssey but then you're spending 35 you know forty thousand um, dollars maybe you can get a used one in like the 20s now but this is you know thirty two hundred dollars and yes you're gonna have to put work into it yes it's not gonna have like sort of maybe the same reliability as a 2018 or newer vehicle However, it's just tremendous, tremendous savings, and there's a reason why the Aerostar um, continues to be relevant today, and that's because, you know, hiding under its um, supposed sort of soccer parent, uh, you know, minivan status is just an incredibly novel vehicle, an incredibly versatile vehicle, and that's uh, just one of the reasons why we love the Ford Aerostar so much on this program. Um, so, let's get into it. 191,000 miles. That's the other thing I love. You know, you see, there's. A, I, I don't think I've done it yet. I, I hopefully will do it before it disappears. There's an Aerostar on uh, listed on Marketplace right now with 300,000 miles, which is, you know, I've seen multiple Aerostars at 300,000 miles. This one's 191, so you know, just just barely broken in. Um, automatic transmission, exterior color red. I love that. Very uh, short and, and to the point. Seller's description, 1990 Ford Aerostar XLT four-wheel drive van for sale. I should say four-wheel drive because it is four-wheel drive. It's not all-wheel drive. Um, currently on the road, runs and drives, 191K, four-wheel drive XLT Eddie Bauer. Now, this is interesting because it says three-liter V6. Uh, according to my research, um, I thought that all the four-wheel drive Aerostars came standard with the 4.0, 
uh, V6. However, this being a 1990, it's very earlier in their run. So they may not have done that until after, until like 92 or 93 when they updated the uh, interior of the vehicle. And, I, and I'm not actually sure when the four liter uh, engine was even available on the Aerostar. Um, probably right around this time period. But this is the thing that amazes me and why I, I, I love you, the audience, so much because you often will um, give me information and, and correct me or give me information that I didn't know about. Um, and, and you all out there are, are, have proven to be just as enthusiastic and in many cases more knowledgeable than me about the actual nuts and bolts of the Ford Aerostar. So janky do thanky to all of you. I have some comments to respond to. I'll try to do that right after I record this. Original stereo and equalizer. Um, as we'll see through some of the photos, it's just got a beautiful uh, sort of interesting interior on this one. Um, and of course, I love like any analog. I think a lot of us that are into classic cars love, you know, the, the analog features, the knobs and the buttons and the, and the you know, anything that's tactile and, and, a, and a, you know, factory equalizer where you can like kind of change the little levels of everything is uh, beautiful. They work great. Power everything, heat and AC work goes down the road great. Lots of new parts sitting on Jeep wheels. Now I have a funny story about trying to put Jeep wheels on an Aerostar. I tried to put wheels from a Cherokee on uh, my 93 Sport model and I was told that they would not fit after doing lots of research that said they would. Now these look like they're perhaps a little older. Um, so, you know, the obviously it's possible to get Jeep wheels on. Now I had the real nice, um, I believe they're called snowflake wheels. They're really cool, like on BBS-ish. Um, kind of a little busy design. I thought they were going to look great. Um, and I had a set of 14-inch uh, tires lying around for my 2012 Transit anyways. That did not work out. But in the end, I kind of really love how my Aerostar came out. 15-inch um, tires, excuse me, with a stock 14-inch uh, tire and wheel set up. And I painted the hubcaps, um, or painted the wheels rather, and put the dog dish hubcaps on it. Um, I do have to do a video. I haven't really shown that in a video with it being all complete and everything. So fleet update coming soon. We're busy here at Janky AF, but you know, in the meantime, let's just talk about this beautiful 1990 Aerostar. Lots of space. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped over the most important line. Rare Digi Dash. So we will see this has the digital dashboard in it, and it's just an amazing sort of 80s, 90s crossover thing here. Very comfortable ride, I believe that. Very rare in the van world. Also true, as we're coming to see, especially, I mean, this is a really, really interesting spec. It's a little rough around the edges, but a fascinating um, spec. And I, I would dare say a really iconic, you know, like the Eddie Bauer edition of the um, Ford Aerostar. Now, I, coincidentally, I am making my own red Ford uh, Eddie Bauer edition vehicle. However, it is a 2002 Volkswagen Jetta. And, um, you know, you can watch my $10 Jetta videos if you'd like. Very rare in the van world. The bottom of the van and frame are in great shape. Could use rockers if you care. I love that. That's just like a, this is a beautiful description. Um, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not deceitful at all, but it's very confidence inspiring. It's very well written because rockers, you know, if you care, you don't need them, but if you care, you could put rockers on. But, you know, driving home that point that the frame is solid, it's just really cosmetic. Um, I would try to put rockers on this, but, you know, that's just me. Maybe just drive it. It's an awesome van, according to the description, and I believe that, too. I want it to go to a good home. I love this. And you see this? We saw this with our last Aerostar video. A lot of people, they really care about these vans, or they're selling them on, on behalf of people who cared about them. And um, there's just sort of a, you know, there, there's, there's a, there's a um, uh, what's the word? Um, excuse me while I pause, but I have to find the right word. There's an inevitable um, caring about the Aerostar that happens. I've seen this time and time again. People dismiss it at first, um, you know, and then, but it just grows on you. And by the end of it, you know, a lot of people, they really care about these vans. They want to see them preserved, you know, and I, and I just think that's great. So I want it to go to a good home. 3,500 or best offer or trade for a Miata. So, you know, Quite a different vehicle, but if you got an old Miata lying around that you're kind of done with and want to upgrade to something bigger, uh, maybe a better winter vehicle, then this really could, uh, you know, you could be a prime candidate to uh, purchase this uh, beautiful Ford Aerostar. So let's get into the pictures now, shall we? Okay, so obviously, you know, right off the bat, you can see, you know, a lot of rust around the edges. This whole panel is sort of, you know, falling off. And it looks like under here, there's, there's um, you know, it looks like the, the lip that should go here is kind of like non-existent so definitely rough around the edges rear bumper 
pretty cracked. I'm gonna say just because I'm crazy that this is salvageable. I think, you know, using plastic or fiberglass or Bondo or sheet metal or some combination of those things, you could get this, you know, bumper looking pretty halfway decent. You could glue these, you know, little uh, metal um, sort of trim pieces back on, but you know, really an elegant looking van. I, I do like it on the bigger wheels. Um, these aren't my favorite Jeep style wheels. These are almost like a, this is a weird, like sort of hybrid of like a, it's like a steel wheel, but it kind of looks like an alloy wheel, or maybe it's an alloy wheel, but it's a really cheap alloy wheel. You know, Jeep and, uh, I think GM did a lot of these where they, they're, they're alloys. They're not like your, you know, steelies with all the little holes in them, but yet they're still not like a, like a upscale wheel. Um, I think it looks great on this Aerostar. I, I don't think it looks bad. I think it does look nice with the bigger, beefier tires and wheels. Um, so you could do that or you could return it to stock or you could put something else on there. Who knows? But just a really, a really timeless package. Like an Eddie Bauer in green, I would say, is pretty timeless. That green over gold Aerostar is a timeless combination. But, but I think for me, the red Eddie Bauer is really the most... Um, sort of iconic and you know the the eddie bauer explorer eddie bauer bronco and especially over the gold the red over gold to me is a really really iconic timeless like 90s piece an eddie bauer edition ford in red over gold just just absolutely stunning um, and a beautiful little gold pinstripe that runs like a double pinstripe runs around the back and that actually interestingly comes up and and as it meets the your fender your wheel well here um, it just gets a little thicker on the bottom to continue this sort of side striping. So I thought that was a really cool like aesthetic choice by Ford there. Gold bumpers, um, you know, just really, really nice looking. Now 1990, very interesting year. And I will say, as we go on through these pictures, you'll see like sort of a little narrative developing that I'm gonna talk about. Now here we see it in the snow. Um, just, you know, a solid, solid looking van. You know, it just, just looks capable, especially in those bigger tires and wheels. Um, looks like a, a machine that could handle just about anything. Now, the grill, 1990. So 86, 87, 88 was the, the five spoke grill, the original grill. Um, 89, 90, and 91 features perhaps the most unique grill because it's the modern style grill, but the Ford logo is located in the center as opposed to up top. And um, I've talked about this before, but um, I've heard people in forums like sort of wonder aloud to themselves why Ford would have moved it up here because right here in the center, it has this like sort of perfect symmetry. And, and, and maybe they were just corresponding with the rest of their design language. And so they had to move it up top, whatever it may be. But I really like the, um, the three spoke grill with the Ford logo in the middle. As we can see, it's like, this is a transitionary time for the Aerostar because the headlamps are not flush. They're still the sort of old style glass headlamps that are not flush to the bezels. That was a, um, a government safety regulation that changed that. Um, so it's modern. It's a combination of the sort of old and new Aerostar. Um, and you know, to the to the to the careful observer, because to the to the casual observer, and even you know, and this is an interesting fleet of red vehicles that's here. Just you know, neither here nor there, but they all look the same. That's what's so great about the Aerostar. But look closely, and you'll see you know subtle differences. Okay, here we have a beautiful night shot. Really appreciate these these photos. Um, now it is interesting because a lot of the photos are at the same angle, but I, I like the day and night contrast. You can see it glistening in the rain here and boy like my brown aerostar my 86 aerostar is just like this where when it gets wet all the clear coat fade kind of goes away temporarily and it looks really shiny and nice and then it dries and it looks a little bit more uh janky but um yeah just a, a beautiful really brilliant looking van here and it just shimmering in the in the night of some shopping center there great photo and again, same angle. <laughs> um, uh, so now we're at Astro's Pizza Restaurant, okay? Keep that in mind. I like this little like sort of wide angle shot they got going on here. And, and, and the, the resolution almost looks like they, it's either a still frame from a GoPro or maybe they put one of those little clippy fisheye lenses onto their uh, camera phone, which I've done many times. Um, they're at Astro's Pizza here. Um, and now we're in the van and look what we have is a pizza. It looks like from Astros and like a drink here. So it's funny that they were like, you know, like, let's go get a pizza. And while we're at it, we'll take photos of the Aerostar along the way that we're going to, you know, put in the listing for it. A lot of things to um, mention here. I really like the lighting, the dome lighting. It's very, it's very like, you know, very artistic with these uh, light rays shining through and just the, the very stark lighting and the, the headlights are on. You can see the, the, the you know, distance here. Um, a little looks like Kia Spectra in the background here, but, but even though it's dark, it's very, very well lit too. So 
Obviously we see our equalizer here in, in the stereo, the factory equalizer, very nice. And then we have, uh, before the interior transitioned over to the second uh, iteration of the interior, we have the floor mounted automatic transmission lever, which was so funny. It's gotta be, I think it's probably the, the tallest or longest automatic transmission uh, floor mounted transmission lever that I've ever seen in a, in a factory production vehicle. I could be wrong about that, but uh, it's certainly, certainly I have not seen a longer one in another vehicle. And then obviously the interior, it's your original interior. Like it looks a lot like my 86 with the steering wheel and the, and the center console and all this, your, all your gauges for your wipers and defroster, HVAC, etc. However, uh, by 1990, and I think this may have started to trickle in around 89, I could be wrong about that, they went to the digital dash, which is just, you know, and, and you can see how, how bright the lights are. Like on some of those old Corvette C4 dashes, the lights, uh, you know, kind of dimmed out, but this is still very, very bright. And you have this really, you know, the Chevy Astro did this as well. For some reason, you know, when, they, when a lot of these companies went to digital dashes, they had this big swooping curve that showed your RPMs and your tachometer. And um, just the way that sort of, it's, it's got like a really nice sort of like almost like 70s-ish retro quality to it, but obviously very 80s as well. Um, so absolutely love this picture. We see another one, and this is like super high res. This is a beautiful picture. And we can see all the wonderful, um, you know, elements of the Eddie Bauer. Now what's interesting is we have cloth seats. Some of the Eddie Bowers had leather seats, but I also think that came a little bit later. Um, but obviously power everything. So you have your color coordinated uh, window switches and this red leather uh, trim on your little map holder and all that stuff there was just these really, really nice touches. You know, it really did give this minivan, you know, an upscale feel and look. And uh, you're nice like, um, dome and then sub dome under dashboard lighting here. Like it just looks like a, it just has this radiant glow. That's very, very nice, very appealing. Uh, I wish we did have some, some um, more pictures of the seats cause I want to see if they had the Eddie Bauer uh, trees on them. That was an iconic styling cue. Um, and I would just like to see, you know, more of the condition of the interior. Um, obviously the wheels got, you know, has some wear on it. Uh, and that's too bad, but you know, all in all, really great photo set here. Again, we have another shot of your great uh, digital dashboard with your fuel gauge, um, your, my, your uh, miles per hour. Um, just a really, really great set of pictures. Okay, here you go. So we do have another one in the interior, but I still can't quite make out if they have the, there's a sweatshirt covering right in this label here is where the, the uh, you know the trees would go and then they have this like so you know uh, many color it's like orange green purple uh, red yellow um, and it, it reminds me a lot of the Grateful Dead dancing bears I always think that was a very similar uh, sort of pattern or style um, interior looks to be in very nice condition possibly even better than the exterior another thing you have and, and that's where all this beautiful light is coming from is you have this overhead uh, trip computer with these very bright dome lights. So then you have more controls and, and information up here. Um, so really for 1990, you know, really decked out, really uh, tech heavy and, and um, you know, futuristic. Um, and, and that's about all the technology that, you know, a lot of us classic car lovers would want. Um, again, we see the screen here. Just really stunning. Now, this is, you know, maybe this is on the next day on the, you know, on the way home. Maybe they slept over at a friend's house and they're, they had their pizza party and they're coming home the next day and we see them driving on the road here. Another really, you know, just beautiful artistic shot. And they, I've never, I think I've only done one interior shot um, for the title sequence for the YouTube uh, thumbnail and that was of the red interior Aerostar that I did. This may have to be the, the year of the Aerostar thumbnail because what a beautiful picture. It's a little bit grainy. You know, you got uh, sort of a high contrast going on, but we're coming over an underpass here. You're driving, and I always love a driving shot. You can see they're doing 51 miles an hour. I'm not sure what this light is for. Uh, that would be interesting to know. Um, doing about, you know, 2,600 RPMs at 51 miles per hour, not bad. And the other great thing about this digital dash is, you know, I've heard Doug DeMiro talk about this on really high-end cars, um, that the the picture of your vehicle that indicates if you have doors open is actually an aerostar and it's actually taken from above which is um sort of way ahead of its time because now we have these 3d <clears throat> excuse me radar graphics where they show the you know an actual like sort of what looks like to be a photorealistic image of the vehicle from above <clears throat> and we have that um, with an Aerostar. You can clearly see that it's an Aerostar depicted in there, not just some generic car. So I think that's very, very excellent too. Just the little details on these vans, you know, it's, 
Oh, boy, really in love with this picture here. Um, okay, another great super high resolution picture. We have, you know, uh, <laughs> a bunch of clear coat fade. Isn't it so funny how some panels just hold up better than others? Like, look at the contrast between these two panels. Little ding in your light there. Obviously, we see the iconic Ford Aerostar taillights with this perfect sort of ratio of these little swooping um, horizontal like bubble lines that sort of round the edge of the arrow starts again like look at this tail light like that's a beautiful beautiful tail light look at the angle how it pops up and then swoops back you know you could say oh it's just a boxy tail light but it's 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 simple in its shape and yet complex in the details that the, the small minute details that create that shape i love these tail lights one of the coolest tail lights ever um, and the more you look at them, the more you realize like for the Aerostar for being such a plain wedge shape has all these intricate little design cues within it that the more you look, the more you appreciate it. Um, Eddie Bauer, like, you know, nice metal, not just like a sticker or something, nice metal badge on there under the Aerostar logo with this nice just little sort of jankified grime around it. Um, and electronic four-wheel drive. Now this, I even think, is different than in the later. I think they sort of de-80s-ified it, if that's a word. You know, they made it a little bit more, the, 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 what, what is it, is it like a Space Invaders or something this font is from? Um, and it's just like extra 80s in here with the little swoops and all these things on the letters. I believe this, this eventually became a little bit more, um, you know, less uh, stylized. It became a little bit more, I don't want to say generic, but the font just got a little bit more, um, you know, less video gamey as time went on. So that itself, you know, an early, an early four wheel drive badge is a super rare piece in and of itself. So that's really, really cool. Great picture. And then, uh, you know, we got a coffee now and we're doing 34 at this point. It's just <laughs> very funny to me when these photos were taken. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, we're proving that it's driving now. According to this, maybe a door is open here. <laughs> and maybe that's what, maybe this is, no, I think the door ajar button was on in an earlier picture. Um, so we have some sort of light on there and we have to see that. And there's our, I believe that's our door ajar uh, light right there. Um, but, uh, you know, all your controls are right here. Um, easy to reach. Looks like we have power mirrors as well. And uh, just another really great photo of this Aerostar chopping up the streets. And uh, one more that we're really seeing lots of different footwear in these photos, which I also appreciate. Um, sort of, a, you know, they were probably drinking their coffee when they take this, so we haven't, we don't see in the entirety of the motor. Um, and that does appear to be, from what I can recall, especially with this air intake, the uh, the three liter, but I don't know, you know, if you're watching this and you know, tell me if this is the 3.0 or the 4.0, because I was under the impression that all all-wheel drives came with the 4.0, but again, that may not have started until later in the Aerostar's run. Um, and just a beautiful red over gold with a Ford blue oval logo in there, your sort of like dark gray, um, unpainted grill there. Just a stunning piece, just a really, really nice Aerostar. And yeah, it's a little rough around the edges, you know. Uh, good luck finding one of these bumpers. I would try to just repair this. And the rockers, you know, I think the sheet metal is a little bit easier to find for these. That's certainly a tough piece to put in right there. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to take it all the way, you certainly could. You could certainly restore this to, a, uh, you know, at least a little bit more. Um, uh, um, you know, what's the word? Complete, I guess, uh, version of an Aerostar. But certainly, you know, no, no, no shame whatsoever in how this is presented. And I think just a really stunning Aerostar. Yeah, it's high mileage, $191,000, $3,200, you know, but it sounds like it does have a lot of new parts. I would, I would, you know, get in contact with the seller and sort of go over what's being done, what needs to be done. Um, and, uh, you know, perhaps be a shrewd negotiator, Ed Bolian style, but, um, boy, certainly a, a very capable van for the price. So there you have it, uh, a 1990 Ford Aerostar XLT extended minivan, uh, four-wheel drive Eddie Bauer, quite a mouthful. Um, and this really is the Ritz, you know, in 1990, you could not do much better than this van. You're riding in style, you got the four-wheel drive, very capable, and you have all the features and amenities as well. A really, really beautiful van, an iconic color scheme. There you have it. Uh, really, really excited about that one. Um, so thank you as always for tuning in. We, we really appreciate everybody tuning into this program. Um, I always say that things are coming in the future. They are, 
you know, it's it's a, it's a uh, a lot of work to get all these things out there, especially the car reviews. Those take a long time to edit, um, but we are working on a couple now. The C8 Corvette will be coming soon. I'm really really excited about that. And uh, in the meantime, we got plenty of Aero Stars uh, to keep you all, um, you know, pleasantly entertained. I I, I hope. Um, so there you have it. Um, thank you as always for tuning in here on Janky AF. And, uh, you know, we'll see you again soon for the next one. And until then, janky do thanky.